I want to see if this will work on the Chromebook. If it works on this, then a machine somewhere in between these two will handle this situation just fine. So uh, I'm a mobile developer and I've been doing it for a while. And when a new piece of tech comes out, I want to evaluate it for whether it can do mobile dev for me or not. So usually I end up getting pretty high end machines like this M1 Max MacBook Pro. Actually, I've been using MacBook Pros for a number of years now. And that's primarily because you kind of have to. So if you want to do cross-platform, you need to build for iOS, you need to build for Android, you got to have those covered. And if you want to run multiple simulators or emulators at the same time, that's a lot of resources. That's why you go with a big beefy machine. But there's some new stuff coming out that maybe you don't have to. <laughs> so let me show you. Just going to Google for this new thing that I heard about. Um, native script stack blitz. So my team and I have been using native script for doing mobile development. We have a number of apps out there and they've recently been doing some really awesome improvements, including this. So uh, native script preview two came out, which is an app that you can use on your phone and stack blitz. If you don't know what stack blitz is, it's basically a development environment in your browser. So here's a blog post on native scripts blog, and there's a nice little link. You can read more about it if you want. Let's click on this link though. I'm impatient. So I'm going to just go there. So it says there's two steps here. One is download the preview app, which I've done already Android or iOS. All right. So I'm going to open that up. Let's get you a little bit closer in here. Shall we nice and intimate? <laughs> is this is it too close? I'll back off. Okay, I just want to show you my screen, really. So this is the preview app right there. That's what it looks like, available in both stores. We can reset this. I already tried it, that's why it's there. So we download the preview app. We choose the starter template. So you can use TypeScript, JavaScript, Angular, Vue, React, or Svelte. That's a lot of options. I'm gonna go with uh, Angular. Don't get mad at me, those React and Vue folks and Svelte folks and TypeScript folks and JavaScript folks. <laughs> Why did I pick uh, the Angular template? Because I know that that one has uh, two views that you can navigate between. It's just a hello world, basically. So this pops up in Stack Blitz. What might be new to you is this QR code here, which um, you may or may not have seen before. But if you've used the preview app in the past, in the olden days, before this new stuff came about, you had the QR code generated on the command line. Now it's in the browser. So look, here's my code. I can navigate my code right in here. I have my prior project in here, I can build it up in here. And when I want to deploy this to a device and check it on a device, I don't need to set up a mobile development environment. All I got to do is just use my camera app, point it at that QR code and uh, it detects it. You can tap on preview. It opens up the preview app and now it builds. It takes a couple of seconds to build. I don't know, maybe like 15 to 20 seconds. All right. And there it is. There is the app right here on my phone. My phone is not connected to my computer in any way. Can you see that? Okay, it's got football players, soccer players for those that are in America, but the rest of the world calls them football players. All right, so then uh, you can tap on one of them and it goes to the details page. It's basically a native app on iOS. Now what's going on over here? Here you'll see that <laughs> my device is connected. It actually knows my device. It knows what I've selected. And every time I tap on one of these, the UI in the browser reflects what I've selected. It prints out. There's obviously a print message somewhere. Let's take a look here. Yeah, right here. It's this console.log this.item and it prints out what I've selected. Let's see. What if I change the code here? Console.log this.item. Hello there. <laughs> and I save this. It basically just applies those changes magically to the phone almost instantaneously. So if I tap on one of these now, it says what I've selected and hello there. And I think when I found this, I was like, this is so cool and so nice. I mean, it is still in beta, so there's a little bit of polish. It's still usable and very nice. Now, this got me thinking, oh, what if I don't need this big, expensive computer anymore? So this machine cost me, I, I don't know, somewhere around $4,000 because I, you know, maxed it out. I wanted to get the best experience for my development. Maybe we don't need that. What about using something like this? Uh, this cost me about $70 on Amazon used. It is an old Chromebook by Lenovo. Let's see if I can plug a USB in here so you can see what I'm doing. Hey, that worked. <laughs> now you can see my screen. This is great. The problem is I can barely see my screen because it's so dark because it's a Chromebook. It does. It's not very bright. Okay. But hey, 
you can do your work. What's the point of this? The point of this is I want to see if this will work on the Chromebook because this is like the lowest low end machine that you can get. If it works on this, then a machine somewhere in between these two will handle this situation just fine, right? So what I went and did here was, by the way, not all Chromebooks support dev mode, which means you can go out to the command line, make sure yours does. I think maybe now with the latest versions, they allow them, but I'm not 100% sure. If you know, leave a comment down below. I just wanted to check this out and I managed to install the native script CLI on a Chromebook. So there it is. It's going to take some time to figure out the version of native script that's installed, but it finally figured out the version. So I'm not saying use native script on a Chromebook. Don't use the CLI. Okay. Don't try to develop mobile applications locally on a Chromebook. It's not a good idea. What we're going to do is pop open that browser and do a search for native script stack blitz, find that blog post, or you can just go directly to it. I just forgot the URL. It's preview.nativescript.org. There we are. Uh, let's start with a different template. Now let's go with this TypeScript template instead of the angular one. And there it is. Now this is going at the speed of the web, whether you're going to be using a really super powerful machine or a Chromebook, the, the requests are going to come back to you just as quickly and the interaction is going to be just as fast. So there it is. It gives me that QR code, which I'm going to tap on again. And when I do that, it connects the device. It starts building it. This is a different app. This is the TypeScript template instead of the Angular template. So it's not going to have the list of football players. This one should have just a little button that you tap. And there it is. Okay. So there is the button. Uh, if you tap it, it just counts down the number of taps that you have left. And on the terminal here in the browser, we get that live feedback. As soon as I do the taps, I can also go in here and make a change in the template. Uh, so let's say I want to say tap me instead of tap. And as soon as I save that, watch this, I'm actually going to put this up at the same time and press enter at the same time to see how quickly it's going to update. So uh, let's see, save. And there it is. Tap me. It updated on my phone. Hopefully you got to see that. Of course, that was just a template and you can also update the code and you can just create new files here and just build up your code. 42. Uh, let's change that to uh, another number. 69. I don't know why everybody's obsessed with 42. What's the meaning of 42 anyway? I'm just kidding. I know. It's from a movie, but I forgot the name of the movie. Is it the galaxy something movie? But 69 has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. So let's go ahead and save that. And there it is. 69 taps left. So it instantly updates. I find this tech to be super sweet and I thought I'd share this with you because this really brings new opportunities to folks that haven't had it. So you can develop for iOS and Android and not necessarily have a full mobile development environment. There's another thing that Stackbliss provides that's pretty cool is you can just connect a repository right here, connect a repository and you can make it private if you want, create the repository and push all with one button. It's just gonna do it. It's going to create the repository, commit it, do the push. And as you're working on your project, you're going to be committing it. And since this is a full project, somebody that's not using StackBlitz can also download it to their local development machine and use it that way too. All right, that's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed. Give this video a like. If you did, consider subscribing. We'll be doing more fun things. I'll see you next time.